Hey people, we're over here at Natural Blaze. Lawsuit could end water fluoridation once and for all by demonstrating its neurotox toxicity. Uh, seems to be the going thing in everything nowadays. I mean, for those of you that follow me, you know that I got toxicity of some bloody sort, which I'm still trying to find a doctor that can actually give me a piece of paper for a blood test. But anyway, uh, let's see what's said. Practice of water fluoridation in the United States has been under growing scrutiny for years by a public that has become conscious, conscious of the fact that adding toxic chemicals, which are proven to be harmful to human health and children's development, to public water is med uh, medication without consent. Nevertheless, the efforts to stop fluoridation of municipal water supplies has been an uphill battle against entrenched financial interests and against debate, uh, debate against dated ideas about health. While each year we hear news of cities heeding the concerns of their citizens and stopping fluoridation, without a major victory at the national level, people will be fighting this for years to come. All the while consuming toxic chemicals in the one thing we cannot live without, water. Uh, the Fluoride Action Network, FAN, is reporting on a major development to cut the head off of this snake and an unprecedented lawsuit is now holding promise for a national reversal of municipal water fluoridation. Uh, the case will present the first time a court will consider, this case will present the first time a court will consider the neurotoxicity of uh, fluoride and the question of whether fluoridation presents an unreasonable risk under the Toxic Substances Control Act. And in contrast to other Sorry, people. Um, it's still my eyes are screwing up. And in contrast to most other legal challenges of agency actions, TSCA gives us the right to get the federal court to consider our evidence. De novo, meaning federal courts are to conduct their own independent review of the evidence without uh, deference to the EPA's judgment. The lawsuit has been served along with a petition containing thousands of signatures of concerned and well-informed citizens and includes more than 2,500 pages of documents detailing the harm inherent in poisoning the public with fluoride. Uh, the negative effects of consuming fluoridated water are well documented and the body of evidence continues to grow. 2012, a major Harvard study uh, presented a study demonstrating water fluoridation lowers IQ. No shit. In 2016, a study demonstrated a link between increased diabetes and water fluoridation. Ah, oh, too bad for the people that already got it. In 2015, the EPA had to issue new guidelines for safe levels of fluoride. See, what they don't tell you when they do this, right? They turn around and say, well, you know, the level that you would be getting in the water is safe, okay? But what they don't tell you is the amount of fluoride that you consume over a 24-hour period. Means the water that you drink, the water that you've cooked with, because that's got fluoride in it, the water that you shower in, and the hotter the shower, the more the fluoride actually seeps into your skin, the toothpaste that you brush your teeth with. So by the time you add all of that, the food that you eat, because a lot of the food's got fluoride in it, right? So by the time you combine all of that in a 24-hour period, you will see that you are well way above the so-called safe level, if there is a safe level when you're talking about poison. Uh, if you have a look as to how fluoride comes packaged, you will see it's labelled poison. How in God's name, drinking poison or eating it or brushing with it could be any good for anything is beyond me. But that's the world we live in, people. So I'll leave a link to this and you can pop over and read it. Um, and there you have it.